Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and welcome to St. Albans. Our service of Holy Eucharist begins on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's name, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, you gave to your incarnate Son the holy name of Jesus to be the sign of our salvation. Plant in every heart, we pray, the love of him who is the Savior of the world, our Lord Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for readings from Holy Scripture. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, Thus you shall bless the Israelites. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the Israelites, and I will bless them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Let's read responsively by half verse, Psalm 8, as printed in your worship bulletin. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your reign in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your, your majesty, majesty is praised Lord. above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses. What is man that you should be mindful of him? The son of man that you should see him. You have made him but little lower than the angels. 
You adorn, you adorn him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands you and put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name. Our second reading is from Paul's letter to the Galatians. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ.
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So this particular day is full of opportunities in terms of sermon material. So it's obviously New Year's Day. It's the second Sunday of Christmas and it is the Feast of the Holy Name. The Feast of the Holy Name is it's part of the church calendar. It's always on the first day of January. And it's not because it's on the first it's the first of January. It's because it's eight days after Christmas, which, as we heard, just heard at the very end of the gospel lesson today, it's, that's, that was part of the Jewish law, that a child would be, a Jewish child would be circumcised and given his or her official name eight days after birth. So, as I said, Holy Feast of the Holy Name, New Year's Day, second Sunday after Christmas. So I've got at least three sermons in my head going on this week. Is it okay if I preach all three? <laughs> no, uh, I'm getting a finger wag here. Okay, maybe not. So since it happens just seldomly that we get to actually celebrate Feast of the Holy Name, I do want to take some time to reflect together on this this important moment in the life of Jesus when he was given his name, the name that had been given to Mary or Joseph, depending on which gospel you read, had been given this name by the angel. So they had been told this child would be called Jesus. So, as Juliet said, What's in a name? And it turns out, as it actually did for Juliet as well, there's a lot in a name, particularly in this first century Jewish context. It's part of a long history of the Jewish tradition that names mean a lot. We have multiple stories in the Hebrew scriptures of people being given names that had something to do with their vocation, their calling as a person. We had the changing of names. We had place names that were incredibly important that spoke to um, what those places meant in the life of faith for the Jewish people. So names are important. And this name, particularly so. The name Jesus, you may have heard this before, actually comes from a Hebrew name which, from which we get the, word, the name Joshua. It's Yeshua. And literally, it means Yahweh, God, is salvation. So, Clearly, this name given by the angel, this name of Jesus, it means something. It speaks to Jesus' identity and vocation as the Son of God, one who came to bring salvation. <clears throat> now, that begs the question, what do we mean by that word, salvation? Salvation. I think many of you have heard me preach long enough to know that I love etymology. I love thinking about words and their meanings and, their, and in, in the roots of those words. And in this case, this word salvation is, speaks to something much more profound and nuanced than we often give it credit for. Right? This word salvation actually comes from a word 
that means wholeness or healing. It's the same root word from which we get the word salve. Something that brings healing and wholeness. Throughout the history of Christianity, we have all too often thought of salvation, or many Christians have often um, thought of salvation as being primarily about what needs to happen for us to get into heaven when we die. It speaks to what we call eternal life. In his wonderful book, The Heart of Christianity, Bible scholar Marcus Borg spends a whole chapter talking about this very question, this meaning of the word salvation. And what he says is that all too often we Christians have become too hyper-focused on the afterlife, on what happens when we die. And certainly that's part of our faith journey and part of the Christian tradition in terms of what Jesus had to say about life after death. But in reality, as Borg says, Jesus doesn't actually spend a lot of time talking about that. We as Christians believe that through in and through him, we have access to resurrection so that death does not have the final word. But none of us, none of us really knows exactly what happens when we die. That's why you often hear it said in one of my favorite phrases in talking about death is that when we die, we enter into the nearer presence of God. I think that's the best that we can say. And it acknowledges that the presence of God is not something we have to wait for, that we only enter into after we die. But rather, God's presence is here and now. That's what the incarnation is all about. That's what we celebrate at Christmas. That somehow, amazingly, mysteriously, in the person of Jesus, God entered into the human condition and became present in a way that God had not been before. Such that God's presence can be experienced here and now in this life. And it's through that presence, going back to the root meaning of salvation, it's in the experience of that presence that we do indeed find wholeness and healing. And guess what? We are frail, flawed human beings, always in need at various times more than others, but always in need of God's presence that brings wholeness and healing. We experience it imperfectly at various times in various ways in this life. At death, we enter the near presence of God. So yes, we can speak to salvation being about the more full experience of God's presence after we die. But we should never be so focused on that that we forget about God's presence here and now in this life, in this world. And in the, in the New Testament, in, in Paul's writings, particularly in the Gospel of John, there is this, this sense of recognizing that God's presence and our experience of God's presence is both a present and a future reality. And it's what can give us real hope in the midst of 
the vicissitudes of life. God's present here, now. When we look out into the world with the eyes of faith, even in all of its brokenness, we can see that God is present. In those who love us, those who support us, especially in challenging times, there are so many ways in which we can see that presence here and now. So, what's in a name? A lot. And the name of Jesus, meaning Yahweh in salvation, reminds us that we can know God's loving presence, God's mercy, God's healing, and we can experience wholeness here and now. Amen. Turning now to page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us affirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form four, found on page 388 in our Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Please join me in reading the names on our prayer list, found on page five of our worship bulletin. Together, we pray for Bob, Bob, Bobby, Carolyn, Courtney, Donna, Ellie, Heron, Hillary, Jackie, Jameson, Jeannie, Judy, Mike, Mimi, Ralph, Rebecca, Sandy, Sandy, Shannon, Stephanie, and Tate. Are there others? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially James Robert Eichhorn, Tom Graham, and Raymond William Carrison, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Turning now to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Happy New Year, St. Albans! Happy New Year! <laughs> and welcome. Good morning and welcome to all. Um, 
What a wonderful way to start a new year together, right? I can't think of anywhere else I would rather be this morning than right here with all of you. Um, welcome also to those who join us online. We're so glad you're here with us too this morning. Um, and a very special welcome to anyone who is new with us this morning. We welcome you. We're delighted you're here. We hope you will stay for some coffee and refreshment and fellowship following the service. And if you are interested in getting more connected with this parish um, that would just thrill us so much and um, the way to do that is to sign the newcomer notebook it's a purple piece of paper outside those doors um, or to use the QR code on the back of the bulletin either way works uh, but we're glad you're here um, some announcements for you as we begin a new month, a new year, um, lots of things coming up, so I want to tell you about them. Um, if you are thinking along the lines of a new year and making new commitments, wanted to remind everyone that we have a weekly Bible study that meets on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. in the Reflection Room, which is also the nursery, um, just off of the narthex. We look at the Bible readings for the Sunday coming ahead, so you're well prepared for getting a lot out of the sermon, and we always welcome new faces at that Bible study. It's a great group, and we're starting back this Wednesday the 4th, so um, if you're interested in that, there's details about it in your bulletin, um, and we'd love to see you. And then also, um, coming up next Sunday, we have um, our our adult formation is resuming with our Sunday morning poetry discussion group on the 8th, and that meets at 9 o'clock downstairs in the youth room, which is next to the choir room. And we always welcome new faces at that group as well. And we have wonderful discussions. Also next Sunday, the 8th, our um, Sunday school for children and youth will get back um, up and running again. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, if you have kids, if you are a kid, if you have a youth, if you are a youth, we welcome you to um, come at 1015 for Sunday school. Um, if you're interested in joining the children's choir, that meets at 930. All of that happens downstairs. And we always welcome new faces for Sunday school um, and, and our youth and children programs. So we'll see you all there next week. Um, the, the college students will be returning back um, in a couple weeks, and we um, have a new semester of meals uh, with them to prepare and share with them. So the Episcopal Student Fellowship dinners, there's a sign up um, online that you can access through our email newsletter. And if you have questions, um, you can talk to Kevin or Elaine Carmen, but it's a wonderful ministry of feeding these hungry college students after they share uh, worship together. And, um, and it's such a wonderful ministry, and I hope some of you will, will consider uh, doing that for the spring semester this year. And then, um, very excited to share that finally, after a couple years hiatus, Cards for Kids is returning in February. If you have never been to this event, it is so much fun. Uh, it's a fundraiser. We're, um, trying to raise funds to support the preschool scholarship program this year. There's been a lot of preschool scholarship needs recently and we want to make sure that that fund is robust. And so this is a, a night of Texas Hold'em and lots of fun and refreshments and, and um, the, the way it works is there's a hundred dollar donation for um, that's encouraged for playing and then um, we're also if you're not a card player but you want to support the preschool and this event you um, you can um, donate gift cards to restaurants or other um, businesses around it supports our local um, businesses and it also will, those will then be used for prizes for the, the t poker tournament so it's a lot of fun I hope you will will put the date on your calendar and plan to support that event however you are able um, also, I want to invite everyone on this New Year's Day, um, it is the, the last Sunday we have in the 12 days of Christmas. Um, starting next Sunday, we'll be in a new season after Epiphany, and so it's time for all of the beautiful greenery and the poinsettias to come down. So if you would like, after the service, you are welcome to take a poinsettia with you. Um, there's some up here, there's some around, um, and even into the narthex, so please take one with you as you depart part um, they they are it's time to take them home so um, they have been so beautiful and now they can beautify your homes uh, so um, 
I think that's everything. Now let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. Our service of Holy Eucharist continues with the great thanksgiving on page 361 of the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive the power to become your children. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, 
the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your or eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with his joy and peace, and through his holy name gave you salvation, the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.